Cyclone Jasper nears its peak in the Coral Sea on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for December 8th. So around the world just one active tropical cyclone but it's a really significant one cyclone jasper a high ed category three on the sapphire simpson scale category four on the australian scale the 80th storm to form this year so far elsewhere we do have one or two areas of interest and i'm afraid to say we've marked one in the atlantic a 10 percent chance next week for a non-tropical low to spin up over the eastern central Atlantic and possibly develop into a nameable system. Whether that will happen or not is still remains a very low chance. In the eastern Pacific there's nothing here right now, 182 days until hurricane season starts again and here's hoping we don't see anything untoward during that time which we shouldn't really into the western pacific and our other area of interest but also at a very low chance just 10 percent for this area of interest that will be moving on through the philippine sea and at the moment looks like it will pass directly over palau whether it's a tropical system or not or just a disturbance remains to be seen in the north indian ocean there is an area there that looks interesting on satellite but we've still not marked it for the time being in the arabian sea west of india we did talk about it on our last tropical weather bulletin four days ago uh, but no clear signals that it's going to become a tropical cyclone now here is cyclone jasper obviously a very powerful storm and uh, it will end up sweeping towards the coast of Queensland early next week and we'll examine that one in further detail on the model section as to what exactly happens to it. But here's the latest in terms of its current position. It's 748 kilometers from Willis Island, 1104 from Bowen, 1108 from Mackay, 1189 from Townsville and 1197 from Cairns in Australia. No warnings in effect for any Australian areas at this point, but of course it is five days away and it will eventually draw closer, uh, but we think it's near its peak intensity, 125 miles per hour right now, uh, and a pressure of around 947 millibars makes it a borderline category 4 on the Sapphire Simpson scale. And that's what our satellite imagery section will completely be comprised of. Well, there's the wide shot first of all compared to Australia there, still mostly off the coast, not affecting any areas really. And here's a close up right now. Some of those islands to the north, that's part of the Solomon Islands there and possibly some of Papua New Guinea, I think. Uh, but in general, the storm itself is of course moving southwards, looking really picturesque on visible imagery. This is the air mass imagery there showing just these rotation of the eye there uh, but really filled out with its cloud tops um, it really looked at its probably its best a little bit earlier on just a couple of hours ago uh, but the eye temperature has been really solid uh, its shape leaves a little bit to be desired especially on the eastern side uh, could even be signs not fully sure whether the eye is fully closed or maybe it was for a brief period and might still be uh, but certainly looking decent from a distance but close up there are signs that it's not completely stacked uh, on top of itself properly and you can see there with that latest imagery the eye just clouding over a little bit more on there um, and that signs that the storm may have halted its intensification process which we are expecting will happen if not now then maybe within the next 12 to 24 hours before we see a little bit of weakening commence it's not going to be a surprise to see it will start to weaken but it, that still means that we could see a significant impact for Australia. Well, let's take a look at sea surface temperatures off the coast of Mexico in the eastern Pacific. They're still looking decent, even though we're now in the off season. One or two little licks there getting close to 30 degrees Celsius. In the Atlantic, those temperatures are still decent as well. In the Caribbean, 28 degrees plus, and even out in the eastern Atlantic, where that system might form, 26 degrees generally around that area, maybe a tad warmer for the first day or two if that model comes to life. You'll see it in a minute anyway. In the Western Pacific, 
Uh, there's those temperatures there as well, looking good in the Philippine Sea, obviously cooling a lot in the South China Sea now, but there's still one or two spots where you'll get those temperatures close to 30 degrees Celsius. In the Bay of Bengal, those temperatures close to 28 degrees around the Andaman Islands, and in the western region there off the west coast of India, very warm waters near that disturbance, 30 to 31 degrees Celsius in a few spots there. In the southwest Indian Ocean, those temperatures are gradually warming, but not that quickly. Near Mauritius, it's around 27 degrees Celsius, but off the coast of Madagascar, very warm on the west coast there, pushing close to 30 degrees. Now looking around the coast of Australia, the northern reaches there, very warm sea surface temperatures, 32 degrees. Where Jasper is right now, it's around 27 degrees Celsius and it will be 26 to 27 all the way up until landfall. South Pacific looking decent as well around Fiji, 28 degrees generally as a rule. Compared to average, the orange areas are areas that are above average. The Southwest Indian Ocean, one or two spots there, especially in the higher latitudes, very much above average, three degrees or more. Around Australia, it is starting to get a bit above average there now as well, as it is the case near Fiji too. The El Nino effect is still very pronounced over the eastern reaches of the uh, equatorial east and eastern Pacific, and in the Atlantic, those temperatures well above average there as well. Oceanic heat content still looks decent for a few areas there, and where Jasper is for a little bit longer before it starts to drop off a bit of a cliff. Eastern Pacific still holding on to one or two little remnants of energy and the Western Pacific still has quite an area there off the coast of the Philippines extending through to the Mariana Islands. Well let's take a look at the computer models then, the GFS over the next five days. First of all looking at Jasper's future, uh, starting to weaken there but what will be the case you'll notice throughout the whole path is that the southern side of the storm will be the strongest almost throughout just until it reaches landfall there where that eastern side gets more pronounced as well. So it could be the case where it retains hurricane equivalent winds there for the whole five day period. That's those yellow colors weakening a little bit there but strengthening again as it gets close to land. And that gives Cairns some tropical storm force winds on that GFS model there at least. In the Western Pacific, looking out for that area of interest, the GFS is still keen on it to eventually form just inside the five-day period. There it is, starting to develop there as it moves through some of the central Micronesian islands, although it's quite bare in that particular region. But eventually it does form there on the GFS, but it's the only model forecasting that right now, so we're staying pretty low at 10%. Rainfall expectations then for the coast of Australia and I'm sure you'll know that wherever the storm makes landfall along with those strong winds there will be a really high amount of rainfall too. Over its path near its peak intensity those rainfall amounts getting very high up and above 500 millimeters and along the coast I'm afraid it's also very high in the Cairns area as it stands if this forecast comes to fruition. That's around nearly 600 millimeters of rain there, 23 inches and obviously uh, splitting off into different uh, parts there as the storm moves inland along the coast and inland. Uh, 10 inches even uh, quite far inland there um, over northern Queensland and a significant rainfall extending further north beyond Cairns and obviously southwards towards uh, Townsville. Longer range, well we're looking at the Atlantic thingamajig, well there it is, the GFS has the highest chance of this thing forming, other models do have it as a low pressure system, whether it's actually tropical or nameable or not uh, remains a low chance I must stress, but we thought we'd show you this Atlantic system, another little system incidentally there as well that's uh, cruising along the coast of Portugal looks a little bit like an alpha type system but it won't be tropical so don't worry about that one. In the western pacific of course we've got this uh, storm that's continuing tracks directly over Palau and then on towards the Philippine Islands making landfall on Samar and then continuing northwestwards towards the rest of Luzon and then that next system another system there forming behind it in that later part of the forecast that's towards day 10 so that's quite far out and I wouldn't put much hope in either the first one or the second one at the moment but GFS really interesting there calling for a category 1 typhoon making landfall in the Philippines although no other models agree. So there's potential hurricane conditions in Cairns there towards that landfall that's on day 
uh, 6 I think it is uh, just as it moves inland there around the 14th 15th or maybe a little bit earlier actually yeah there it is the 12th and 13th actually and then moves inland continues southwestwards weakens pretty quickly its remnant is still traceable just about possibly into the Gulf of Carpentaria by the 16th of December uh, but then it doesn't do anything else once it gets there you can scan the barcode and that will take you to the Force 13 merch store where we have all of our usual items ready and packed for Christmas as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request and are still waiting for Hone t-shirts and they're still waiting for you. Uh, we didn't get a caption there, but this is the Silly Range. Uh, this is what's going on in the Western Pacific during that time. Quite a lot. Uh, a further going on with that second storm there pushing on towards the Philippines but really struggling against very poor conditions obviously at this time of year and almost makes it to the Philippines before being absorbed by uh, that system off to the west there those winds that are really shearing it up and destroying that storm before it properly gets there but it could be a rain uh, situation there but that's not really a tropical cyclone at landfall Southwest Indian Ocean, might it be about to wake up? Well, on the 18th of December, the GFS develops this system. Still a long way out. Uh, tracks just east of Mauritius, probably very close to Rodrigues, and peaks as probably a strong Category 3 there before rebounding towards the southeast and curving well out to the uh, subtropical latitudes. So an interesting start to the season that would be if it does form, but apart from that, we are struggling to see any further activity in the Southern Hemisphere. Until possibly this. What's going on here off the western coast of Australia? Well, maybe another system is trying to form on the GFS model. Uh, the 21st, 22nd of December, there it is, forming off the coast of Western Australia and moving down towards the south. And it looks like it might be taking aim towards the area around, I think it's Derby, that region there, um, and then eventually possibly inland. We'll wait and see what happens with that one, but it is still a long way out. I wouldn't be fretting about that one just yet, but keep watching. On this day in 1993, we had two strong systems active. One of them was very strong, Typhoon Lola, peaking as a Category 3 on this day uh, in the South China Sea before going on the strike central and southern Vietnam. We also had uh, Typhoon Manny behind it, which was approaching the Philippines as a Category 1, and I do believe that one got quite strong as well the day after. But on December the 8th, 1993, the world looked like this. And that image, of course, the main image there, that is uh, Typhoon Lola at peak with our latest enhancement. Well, back to today and the tropics in the Northern Hemisphere, are they finished yet? Maybe, maybe not. The next name in the Atlantic is Vince. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Selma. And in the Central Pacific, it is still Hone, as it has been for just over four years. In the Western Pacific, our next name is still Jellowat, and a pretty poor performance from the Western Pacific this year. And in the next, in the North Indian Ocean, the next name is Rimal. Well, in the Southern Hemisphere, it felt like it, I was spending quite a while saying the next name would be Jasper in the Australian region, and now I can tell you that the next name is Kiralee. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, the first name is Alvaro, and in the South Pacific, the next name is Nat. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. Hopefully, we'll be back with another bulletin tomorrow night.